Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to walk you through another unique way I've found to utilize shadows. This time I figured out a way to create an asymmetrical border for buttons by applying a custom shadow configuration to it. Now, this effect creates a unique frame that can give the report some personality and a little bit of aesthetic flair. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So I've actually updated a video that I've done previously on time perspective. As you can see up here, I have buttons for quarter, month, and day. If you select any of these, what it will do is it'll automatically take you to the corresponding time perspective. So if you're interested in how I actually built the bookmarks and everything for this, I'll go ahead and link you to the video for this down in the description. But today's focus is gonna be the new thing you see here at the top, which are these thin little borders that I've created onto these buttons. And what I have for the quarter selected in this example, you can see that the top piece is a wider, lighter color. And if I select the other ones, then it also switches to that. So basically I have kind of the active and inactive button that I've used in a lot of different states when toggling them, but I've created a single border on the top frame that allows for just a little bit more design flexibility and creative freedom that can come into building these out to give it a bit of a unique look and design. So let's break down these buttons and see how I implemented that. As an example here, I have them a little bit larger onto the page. I'll go ahead and select the active one over here. Now the trick comes from the fact that I'm not using any of the standard button features. I'm in fact actually using the shadow feature down here. The trick comes from how the shadow gets customized. Now by default, you normally use one of the presets that you see here at the top, but instead of using any of the presets, what I'm instead doing is a custom preset, and then I can configure all of these elements down below. Now let's break each one down one by one. What I've done is I've taken the size and the blur, and I've set those to zero. As an example, if I return these to default, you can see that it starts looking more like a traditional shadow. So we're gonna go ahead and set both of those to zero. And now if you notice that the distance down here is five pixels, again, if I put that to zero, it goes away. If I set that to five pixels, it now goes five pixels above. And the other thing that's important is the angle down here. Depending on the angle, it's either gonna show up perfectly at the top, left, right, or bottom. Technically, you could add this single-sided border to any of the four sides, but I'm choosing to put it above at the top. And with this happening, my selected button is gonna have a lighter color at the top and my unselected button, which has the standard color options to show you on hover and on press dates, that's gonna have a darker button. And collectively, when I'm over on the page here, actually activating them, each of the toggles that are in here between the quarter, the month and the day, you can see that they switch between each other. So not only does the color of the button itself change, but the shadow color changes depending on those two buttons that I have for each of these selections between any of these three categories of bookmarking that I wanted to create. You can also see that here if I come up to view and I turn on my selection pane and you come over to date buttons, you'll see that just like my other videos, I have a selected and unselected version of each of these buttons that are in here that as I navigate around with this, they toggle the visibility of the active one and then they disable the visibility of the inactive one as I select around with those. And again, more detail on creating those bookmarks and the active and inactive states for the buttons outside of the scope of the shadow that I just showed you is gonna be in a video down in the description that I'll link you to as well. But overall, I'm just really excited about all the unique ways that I'm finding to use shadows besides just traditional shadows. I've had a video that talks about how to actually create a nice little frame around the border of an object, and now i am figured out a way how to add a border on one single side of a button in this case. So hopefully this is something you found useful or can implement in some of your reports. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.